15-year-old Megan Nichols is missing. Police zero in on someone close to her, Megan's estranged father, who is a sex offender. I had 15, 12 armed men show up and say, where is your daughter? You are under arrest. U.S. Marshals pick up Jackson Nichols, now living in the Tulsa area. He's thrown behind bars and held on a federal warrant, showing he's an unregistered sex offender. How does that make you feel? Um, not very good. angry. How's that? Especially since it was all a huge mix up. In 1997, a then 18-year-old Jackson was dating a 14-year-old girl. And when the girl's mother found out, Jackson is charged with two counts of nonviolent sexual assault. But over a decade later, when he's pulled over for a traffic ticket, Jackson got a big surprise. I am now a registered sex offender and I'm on an FBI watch list for 10 years. Ends up, it was just a clerical error. Literally within five minutes, my case was dismissed and I was escorted out the door. But somehow the dismissal paperwork doesn't make its way across state lines from Illinois to Oklahoma. So when Megan disappeared and cops looked into her father, a warrant was issued. They let me sit in Tulsa County Jail for almost a month because they forgot to file paperwork. It took extreme measures for someone to call and harass them. And finally, they set it out and I got out. Jackson was cleared as a possible suspect in Megan's disappearance. I can't claim to be a, a real parent or a good parent. My ex-wife did all of that and she did an amazing job. I didn't know that I could be this angry or this set. It's uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. But Megan's mother never considered her ex-husband a viable suspect because she has her own suspicions about what happened to her daughter. Fairly soon before her disappearance, Megan was seeing a young man. But according to friends and family, there was just one problem a boyfriend of hers that she was seeing. He was with another girl. The boy was also in a relationship with another girl at the same time. They say it was a good old fashioned love triangle. There had always been this other girl and I asked Megan if she was going to prom because she had mentioned going to prom with him. And she's like, I didn't want to tell you this, but he is taking and he's taking this other girl. While Megan takes the news in stride, her mother, not so much. I'm tired of it. I, I'd had it at that point. He's using her and you, and you're done. You know, you're 15, he's 18, this is over. But was it? She kept staying in contact with him, so I took her phone from her. So one evening, I wanted to check her phone just to see if she missed anything important. Ends up, Megan wasn't missing a thing. Now, I seen this text conversation between her and the boy, but I could only see her side of the conversation. And it was happening as I was looking at her phone. So I walked upstairs and I'm like, Megan? And she's like, yeah, she bounces out of her door. And I said, I'm seeing a message between you and him here happening. And her face just, like she was hat, you know? <laughs> I said, where's your iPod? She didn't answer me, and my heart just sunk. And it was about to sink even lower when she reads the text messages from her daughter's iPod. She had made the comment that she couldn't stand me, and she just wanted to get out of this house, and, and his, his response was, I just want to come get you right now. It was enough for Megan's mom to put a stop to what she calls a forbidden teen romance. So I called him from her phone and I said, don't contact my daughter again. This is over. But still, it wasn't over. On Memorial Day 2014, we had all went to bed and I woke up 
uh, about 9.30, and it's not uncommon for me to go up and check on Megan. When I went up there that night, she wasn't there. I'm in a panic mode. This had never happened. Megan had never left without telling me. Megan's gone, but not her phone. And there's a recent text from a female friend, which simply reads, okay. I called that phone number back and the boy answered. Megan's mom calls police. And while I was on the phone with the police, Megan came walking from our backyard. But whatever happened between Megan and this boy that night or the next few months leading up to her disappearance, no one can say for sure. But one thing was certain, according to Megan's cell phone records, as seen here. The last three calls, I want to say, that she made before she disappeared or supposedly ran away from home were made to this boy. And then there was that ATM surveillance video. Megan's mother says there was more to see than just Megan's image. There was something else in the background. In the very back of that video, Jared and I could see a car. It looked exactly like the boy's car. At the very end of the video, after she had disappeared from it a few moments later, you could see this car pulling out. According to Kathy Joe, Fairfield police claim there was no car in the video and Megan's parents haven't seen it since that fateful day. But Megan's mother says there was no denying one thing she saw that day, her daughter went missing. This boy was at some point washing his car within 24 hours after Megan's disappearance early in the morning on a holiday. Suspicious, I don't know, maybe a little unusual. And what does this boy have to say about all of this? We went looking for him to get his side of the story. We didn't end up finding him, but apparently he had plenty to say on his Facebook page. He writes in part, okay, this has gone on long enough. I had nothing to do with this and that I have nothing to hide. I am not in the video as she withdrew her money and ran from her family. This is the first time I've spoken up to defend myself. I shouldn't even have to defend myself if I'm not involved. And police seem to agree, saying he is not a suspect. That's bull****. That story sucks. You are full of crap. But Megan's father believes he knows why. The boy's own father is an Illinois state policeman. I guarantee if he was my 18-year-old son and a 15-year-old Illinois state policeman's daughter went missing, this would be a whole different scenario. When we reached out to Fairfield Police, they would not speak to any claims made by the family since this is an ongoing investigation. The Charlie Project, a website set up to help solve missing person cases, lists Megan as an endangered runaway. But no matter what, Megan's family is holding out hope they'll hear their daughter sing once more. It's not unlike Megan to come down the stairs singing, or even if she was in her room, she would play her ukulele and sing, and we could hear it. I still look for her, you know, she should still be there. Take one more good look at Megan Nichols. She was five foot six and weighed about 111 pounds. She'd be 18 years old right now. If you have any information on her disappearance, you are asked to call the Fairfield Police Department. That number is 1-608-842-2151.